Okay, perfect. All right. Double check. Looks like it's all happening. Looks like we are good. Yes. Okay. Ryan Butler in the house today. Ryan, I'm so excited. <clears throat> I'm so excited to have you as my guest today. I'm playing to win. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan, for being on the show with me today. No, thank you. Thanks for inviting me and happy to be on. Oh, man, I'm so happy to have you. You know, I'd always watched your career from afar, you know, uh, and we, you and I had never really been able to, to work together in any capacity. And so I felt so lucky when I got the list of panelists at Family Reunion that I was facilitating. I saw your name on it. I'm like, yay, I get to, get to know him better. So I'm like, I have to have you on the show. And I'm so I'm just so honored. I know how busy you are. So thanks for being here. No, thank you. And I mean, that was an honor for myself. I mean, it was, you know, some of the OGs, as I call them, of uh, Keller Williams and, and got to share the stage with you guys. Yeah, that was amazing. That was, a, that was an incredible room, right? There there was definitely magic happening in that room, wasn't there? The conversations had, oh. It was a lot of energy, a lot of emotions. <laughs> <laughs> All, the things. All the things. All the things, All the things. Well, well, you are an amazing person and I just want our listeners to get to know you and I don't know if you've ever really done a lot of work in Austin, um, but I'm, I just want to introduce you. So not only do the agents watch this, but we have listeners from all over uh, the world, really, that that check into this. So I would love to to introduce Ryan Butler to the world. I know you're very successful. In fact, I I posted your your LinkedIn to just give a little bio because I also know how um, you're also very humble. So I'm going to give a little bit of a I'm going to read a little bit from your your LinkedIn. OK, so you're a mag managing partner at Coalition Properties Group, CPG. Uh, your Keller Williams International Top 100 team, selling over 100 million real estate a year, covering Washington D.C. metro area. You're a D.C. resident for 15 years, uh, and you've developed a deep knowledge of the market, which has allowed your team to sell 600 homes since 2019. Uh, you, you're into investing, and it's a, it can be stressful and competitive, so you take a real um, art to that. And you provide all the information you need during the transaction, this da 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 To best serve our clients, we at CPG bring a team of high-level professional agents and operational staff with strong support systems to help accomplish our client uh, clients' re real estate goals. Which, with our mission to build, a uh, being to build our community in all things real estate, lifestyle, and wealth building, I'm deeply committed to and entrenched in my community. In addition to real estate, our team generated over 100 thousand dollars or almost a hundred thousand dollars for charity during covid through direct donations and matching donations that's amazing this allowed us to have an impact on our clients and the larger community at hand when not working i love spending time with my wife and daughter traveling singing musicals and disney songs i did not know that about you <laughs> working yeah, out <laughs> what's that no i'm a sucker for disney no. okay what's your favorite disney song um probably a whole new world Oh, that's a yeah, good one. It's a great song. Yeah. Would you like to sing it for us today? No, not today. Today's not the day for that. <laughs> <laughs> you catch I do love karaoke that song. night. You yeah. might catch up. Okay, karaoke night. Karaoke and then, night. And then, but I Make see you at. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you know that is a great song though. From that's Aladdin, right? Mm-hmm. And is it the feel of the song, or is it the message that you love so much? Both. I like them both. Um, I love the sing. I love the vocals in it too. It was pretty cool. So yeah, I've, uh, I'm a sucker for those. <laughs> you know, uh, me too. I love. I'm I'm right there with you. Um, but a whole new world. Think about that. You know, now I have it in my head. I want to like sing with you right now. Yeah. <laughs> but you think about that's kind of what we're in right now is a whole new world, right? Like a whole new world of of just there's so much happening in our industry right now, right? And you and I were chatting before we went live about just. So many more conversations uh, happening because there's so much misinformation about there, uh, out there about what is happening in our world, right? And so yeah. I think it's really important to to have great people like you that can really educate the clients what's actually happening. Yeah, um, it's it's been a it's been a lot of changes, especially over the last call it uh, eighteen months. So, yeah, you no, know, yeah. <laughs> Gary Keller would say, onward. That's right. 
That's right. And the people that are going to be uh, leading that are the the people that are staying like with the client and educating them along the way, right? Because it's not, there's a, just a lot of noise. And I think that that's our job as real estate professionals and advisors and professionals is that we just guide people through the noise, right? Because there's a lot of noise right now. So mm -hmm. yeah, well, I, I'm here to talk about that today. Although the whole new world made me remind <laughs> of like, true. if we just lived our lives like an Aladdin on that thing and just saying a whole new world, you know, amazing, what, what amazing eyes and perspective we would have, right? Because there's such a, a curiosity in that song, right? An opportunity. No, no, it's great. And yeah, that, I mean, it has a lot of parallels to our day to day for sure. Absolutely. Yes, it does. Well, let's back it up. Who's Ryan Butler? Where'd you grow up? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Ryan Butler? What a question. Um, <laughs> I'm usually the one asking the questions. I know. That's why I like to get you in the hot seat. <laughs> uh, I'm just a little country boy from Mississippi. Um, so that's where I'm originally from. I'm from the Mississippi Delta. Uh, there's a little bitty town in there called uh, Moorhead, Mississippi. And that is uh, basically in the in the my county is home of the blues. So BB King is a is a big factor in, in our area. He grew up with, you know, small town. So my family definitely knows him. Um, my father is act. My grandfather actually has a video recorded in the BB King Museum, just kind of like talking about the relationship and stuff. Because BB King actually taught him how to drive a tractor. So uh, <laughs> no way, that's amazing. I love BB King. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of what my area is known for, along with like you know really good catfish. Um. So I grew up there more or less till I was about twelve. <clears throat> my father um was in the military, and so um it, we're you know my mother and father are both from there, but my dad joined the military, but we still stayed stayed local. For the most part, because my dad was traveling, yeah. doing you know, doing doing the doing the country's work, right? And so after that, um, eventually we got we we're able to be stationed together, and we moved overseas. So we went to Germany for uh, six years, and so that's kind of like you know my primitive years to all the way through my high school years, big in the sports. Um, I love I love sports. Um, football can be a can't be a, a a boy in the south and not play football, right? <laughs> what was your what was your position that you played? I was running back. Okay. A running okay. back and safety, defensive back. Um, so I did Very that. Nice. What, did what years? Play. What years? I'm sorry, Ryan. What years were you in Germany? How old were you when you were in Germany? Yeah. So from 12 to 18. Oh so wow. 18. Yeah. So basically, all, all the middle school and high school. Wow. Okay. How was that? Like going over there? Was it an American, like a school abroad that was there that you went to? Yeah, it was an international school. Um, well, there was like military base school. And then um, I went, I lived in two different places. And then the last one was an international school. Everybody spoke English and everything. So, okay. um, you know, not too, a lot of different people from across the country in one place, just because, you know, the, military doesn't uh, uh discriminate in, in where you come from so you got a lot of different uh cultural uh even within america right like cultural differences um wow. backgrounds those types of things so you yeah. really start learning about um other people and other you know places in america how people live there and you know what what's what the norms are and stuff so it's, it's, i definitely learned a lot it helped me understand different perspectives with people no kidding. Wow. That's really cool. So, cause those are some really pivotal years, right? 12 to 18. Those are really like where you're kind of like finding out who you are. So they had football and everything over there. Like you could play that you, they had sports and everything over there in Germany at the international schools. They did. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So we would just travel around the continent, basically playing football games, which is kind of crazy when you look back on it, you know, but yeah, you, you know, you could go to England, you could go to Turkey. I mean, it was pretty crazy. Yeah. That's really cool. Like that's that is so good. that is so cool, Ryan. That is, I'm so glad that you said that. So, because I was going to say, because I, you know, I lived in Germany for nine years, right? My kids are German mm -hmm. and German American, and so like I know how big that country is, or how small it is, right? And yeah. I was like, okay, well, I guess you just play each other. So you went and played other countries. Yeah, I mean, there were schools within the within Germany, and then there were other countries too that we'd go play, like uh, England and Belgium, Netherlands. Wow. Uh, those were the big ones. Okay. 
of some that's spot, cool. Italy, right? So yeah, kind of crazy, but yeah, that that's how it went. Yeah. So for you to be that age and just get that exposure to like a whole new world's your theme, I think, uh, is just, you know, you're just open and learning lots of like seeing the whole world at such an early age. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Um, you know, I know everybody doesn't get it. And so, but it was cool though. Um, I, I enjoyed it. My family, you know, we had a good time over there and had fun mem fun memories. Yeah, it sounds like it. I love that. Okay, so what happened at 18? Did you all move back or did you just move back or what happened after school? Yeah, after after high school, I went to college. Um, and so I was really um, tried to continue my sports career. So I, I ended up playing football um, for a little bit at Georgetown. So I went to Georgetown University for my undergrad. And then, nice. and then I was playing football there for a little bit. But, you know, it was a lot of it was a lot of pressure to go with the academics and, you know, it, it was a lot going on. So I said, you know what, I'm probably, probably not going to the NFL. So I should probably uh, just go focus on my studies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, in Georgetown is super competitive. That's a really competitive academic school. Yeah. 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 That's what you figure out. You, you know, it is, but then you realize it's a little bit more than what you, <laughs> what, they, what they lead you to believe. Yeah. So, okay. So what, what did you, what were you studying? What did you study at Georgetown? So I started off studying medicine. So I was pre-med and I was, um, you know, like a bot, what was I, a biology major initially? Okay. Um, didn't like that. Didn't like that at all. So I left that and, and then I went into math that was better, but not like what I wanted. And then I ended up in computer science actually. So I have a degree in computer science. And what did you want? And that's what college is about, isn't it? Like, it's so rare that people know what they want to be in high school. Like, that's what college is kind of about is exploring the different things to find that. But what about computer science attracted you, do you think? Well, I just knew it was a good way to make money. I'm like, the math, I, I couldn't see the path in the math. I'm like, okay, math is great. <laughs> but what job am I going to get with this? And then I knew for a fact, I'm like, oh, this is just like math with some logic and computer science. I was like, I can do this and get paid well. All right, cool. Um, because, you know, in Mississippi, it's, it's. Um, I mean, you live in America, you know, everyone's got some, some type of thought about Mississippi already, right? And so, and then to be from Sunflower County, the county that I'm in, it's just a low earning place. And so I never wanted to, be in a situation where I couldn't earn um, like a good income. So yeah. I think that's an important part of your story, actually, you know, to got you kind of where you are today. So already in college, you were thinking that way. You know, that's my point is you were thinking about, you know, why you chose computer science was to have, you know, a bigger earning opportunity, right? Like knowing that where you came from and things like that, like seeing that that young age, that's pretty cool. Did oh, you yeah, and I had that way before then. <laughs> oh, you did. You knew it earlier on. Okay, you knew it. Yeah. Early on, I didn't I never wanted to be broke. I knew that. I never wanted to be poor. Uh, and I never wanted to be broke again. So that I refused to do that. And that probably drove me for a really long time. Um and you know, it, it has its advantages to be being driven like that, but I wouldn't say that that's you know the end all be all for sure. Yeah, but it's it was a motivator for you at a very early early age. So what happened then after college? After college, um, I went into the workforce. I went into the workforce, and I, I knew even but when I was a kid. I always tell people um, this is a story I tell a little bit where um, people all say, "When did you want to get into real estate?" And I said, "Probably when I was about 10. Um, really? I had a cousin who came down, and he was you know in the height of the the real estate boom and the uh, I guess it would be the nineties in the nineties, um, the height of the height of the boom. I mean, he was flipping 10 homes a month. And so he was doing, <laughs> he was doing a ridiculous amount of business and, and, um, and, you know, he had a great lifestyle to go with. And I was like, that looks great. I think I can, I can get down with that. <laughs> so I, I wanted to be a doctor and I wanted to own real estate since I was like, you know, basically wow. eight years old. Wow. That's awesome. And so after that, I went into the workforce. I worked for, you know, big companies, small companies, government contracting across the board, just um, 
you know, computer science-y stuff, if you will, but just yeah. building websites, building web applications, those types of things. And, um, and quite, um, but actually, you know, what's interesting right after college that it actually took me a couple of years before I got there because I graduated. And so the great recession, no one can get a job. <laughs> mm. So I had to actually like, it took me a while to get there. You know, I worked for, I worked at the gym. I worked at Staples. I worked, I had like usually had three jobs just trying to make it work and, yeah. uh, and, and trying to work my way out of, out of all of those kind of issues while kind of searching for a more permanent job. So that took a little bit to, to get through on that, but um, you know, it worked itself out eventually. Where were you though? What part of the, were you in DC already at that point? Yeah, I was or... in DC. I was living in Virginia actually. So me, me and one of my buddies from a uh, football team, he ended up buying a condo. He's a couple years older than me. He bought a condo and uh, I just moved in with him to be a roommate. Oh, wow. Well, okay. So you stayed North. You stayed up there. You never... Oh yeah. 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 Never really. I mean, I pretty much stayed in the DC area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So how did that lead you to real estate? Like where did that come into your life? Well, I just knew that I was going to be buying real estate. So as soon as I graduated, I got a job. I had already started going towards the path of real estate. I went and got approved. Um, took me a while on that too, but I got approved for a NACA loan, the NACA, Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America. And they're a national organization that kind of helps people um, with home ownership. Like they're, they're, they're a really big org. Uh, they got a lot of respect and access to capital. And so um, I knew I was going to use that program because it was no down payment and no closing costs. Um, and it was the interest rate was lower than whatever the current standard one was. So I suffered through their programming <laughs> because it takes a <laughs> lot like, you know, they're they're still a nonprofit. So, uh, you know, overworked, underpaid folk working <laughs> with counselors. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I did that. Finally got a house. And when I bought the home. I had like a two and a half percent interest rate. Um, this is like a couple years out of school. So it must have been like 2011 or something like that. So two you're like 25 ish kind of thing. 24. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah 24, 25. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Saved up a bunch of money. Um, and then the good thing is I didn't have to spend it on there. So it worked out. So I saved up a bunch of money, you know, fought through all of the the, the low paying jobs I had. Finally got a higher paying job, um, accelerated the savings, bought the house. And then I just rent. I mean, you know, I'm still living like a college kid. Right. So I just rented out every room. And and then, yeah, so I was net positive, even staying in the house like 500 bucks a month. It was great. That's yeah. brilliant. So a 24 that's the year homeowner. Yeah, that's amazing. The 24 <laughs> and you did the house hacking where you rent out all the rooms. Right. And so you're positive cash flow flowing five hundred dollars and all of that money is just going to pay off this equity that you have. Right. Mm, I well, it was paying the mortgage, and I was taking the extra and 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 using it. I was saving well, no, it. No, I mean, but 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 at least the pay. I, I mean, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right? I was just. <laughs> I would say the extra money definitely wasn't going yeah. towards the mortgage. That's one yeah, thing yeah. I did not do where I could have. Uh, if I had to put a cherry on top, I would have done that. But yeah. yeah, no, it was it was cool, man. And I met a lot of people. Some of them became you know became friends. Some of them became clients. I mean, it's it's crazy to see where they are. People that just kind of stayed in your house and, uh, you know, they had, they're really successful in their field of, of, um, of, uh, you know, their field of career. So that was kind of cool to see. But right after that, I just hopped right back in. Like as soon as I bought a home, I was on the hunt to buy another one. And so I think I bought like five homes in the next 18 months after I bought that first one. So I was very aggressive, probably not that, uh, conservative as I should have been, but I, I was definitely extremely aggressive on, on the, uh, the goal for the hunt for uh, the next deals and the hunts to build like wealth building. So I, I always had that kind of mindset, um, from a very early, early age. I love that. So that's, that's insane. Like five homes in the next 18 months. And so did you continue that same model where you would like buy it and then rent it out per room or did you turn it into like single family, like no, so the, uh, all the rest of them so I started flipping homes. Oh, flips. Okay. Yeah, house flips. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, you know, and, and I kept progressing in my career. So I had high paying job. I started flipping houses. Everything was grand. And then, uh, and then I lost my shirt on the house and that was it. So like, 
you know, and then I had the, I lost a lot of money, uh, all the money I made plus some. Yep. And so that was like one of my biggest lessons um, that I learned there. What was the, le what, what was the lesson that you learned on that one? When you lose well, everything? It really, yeah, it was just about what kind of risks that you should take and how to manage risk. And so I, th I just think about risk a lot differently now, now, and, you know, when you take a risk, it's like there's layers of risk. It's like, how many of those layers are you are you willing to take a chance on? So mm -hmm. I find out some things I'm like more willing to take a chance on, some things I'm not. And that's what I learned over time. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And, you know, but we, you know, in, in the shift book, I was just talking about this uh, with our agents is, is we learn more from our failures, though, than our wins, right? Yeah, for sure. I learned, I learned the most from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, we fail our way to, to success. We don't succeed our way to success, right? We fail our way to success. And I know now you've got some distance from that. But at the time that hurt a lot, I'm sure, because everything you'd built in an, in an instant or an instant in a uh, one decision or one risk that you made that was didn't go in your favor it made you start over right so um right over for a long time yeah what did what did you do after that how'd you recover from that honestly i just worked my job and i tried to uh take all the monies that i was making from that still live like a college kid for a really long time in some ways i still probably do still live like a college kid <laughs> but um i just paid everybody off man just gave them cash in hand and uh, paid everybody off, also paid off all my student loans because I wanted to be, you know, I, I was one of those kids, wanted to be a millionaire by 30, wanted to be debt free. Uh, didn't do the millionaire part, but I did the debt free part. So I was able to get through all my debts besides like my housing, my uh, mortgage debt. Okay. I did all that, and um, I was happy. That's man. great. Credit cards, no student loans, got through all of that stuff. Yeah. And how'd that feel? It felt amazing. I threw a party. <laughs> good party that was good a song you. that came out uh it was called uh finish finish paying sally maybach it was like a rap song and so i I did a theme party around that uh after i finished paying sally maybach yeah that's amazing that's amazing wasn't wasn't part of your story like your grandmother was part of the the college thing or, or yeah, wasn't yeah she uh she signed off on some loans for me because when i got the college you know, they gave me one financial package. And then as college went along, they tried to change it up on me. Um, and that's one of the, you know, I don't call it college is predatory, but that's kind of how they do, you know, in the end, like yeah. they give you this amount of money and then all of a sudden you're taking out more loans and more loans. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Like what, why is this, why is this that? Or why won't you give me the loan? Especially considering like um, I had my, I had my tuition paid for. So all of my loans were around like room and board and they forced you to stay on campus for like a couple of years. So it's like, I couldn't even, you know, you're, you're just in a catch 22. Yeah. 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 I hope they changed that, but I don't, I don't know if they have or not, but yeah, that was the situation I was in. Well, it's a, it, it's actually a problem. And Gary talks about this a lot, right? That it's, it's the number one debt in our country is student loan debt. And, and, yeah, it's unfortunate because there's other countries like you lived in Germany, right? And so like in Germany, that's not a thing there, right? You just go to college and I'm sure there's some kind of expense, but the, I mean, my kids literally seriously contemplated going to Germany for school because it's just such a different environment. And here there's a lot of money made around that, right? It's uh, when you tell people that it costs, you know, 80,000 a year at some of these schools and more, it's like insane. And so you graduate and you have this wonderful degree and this great experience and you have <laughs> half a million dollars in debt, it's just unheard of, right? You don't see that around the world, except in the United States, for, for sure. sure. I mean, especially, you know, you go to law school next. And the, so all yeah. of a sudden you got a million dollars in student loans. For oh sure. yeah. You're going to be a doctor. So there's a million right there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, I got to say, I'm kind of glad I didn't take that route. That wasn't yeah. Well, I think it's working out for you, right? And I, I would say you're more of a doctor of real estate, right? And wealth building for people, right? So you just took, took that love of care. Yeah. <laughs> whole new world, whole new world, baby. Okay, well, let's talk about, okay, so you started on the investor side more. You're mm -hmm. still doing your job. When did you get your license? When did that come into your world? Well, I got my license because my partner wouldn't uh, take me on as a client. So my 
my partner Harrison Beecher, he uh I always say, man, he fired me from being a client. He fired me from being a partner. You know, it was crazy. I tried to join his team. This guy Harrison Beecher, man. But um basically he he, <laughs> he didn't really want to show me any houses. So I was like, man, I'll just see my own houses. So I got my license and I said, like, all right, you know, I can probably help some people on this. So then I started doing dual career things um with it. So I was dual career for like Hmm, maybe seven months, seven months. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. Um, and then I went all in after that. Yep. So um that that I pretty much got licensed after I was trying to, you know, come back from all of the the bad decisions that I had made. And um it was a way for me because I still didn't want to give up on the real estate. So I kept going on the real estate and um and that's how I got my license. That's awesome. And did you stay more towards the investor world at the beginning? Because no, I, don't, no I, I went I went heavy into the sales because I started just the math just made sense where I'm like, well, I can accelerate my debt payoff. I can do all these things and then, then I can go back into the investments. So I just wanted to kind of get debt free before I started doing crazy investments and stuff like that. And so that's the path I chose. OK, so how did this amazing coalition team come to be? Well, it came to be because after I begged Harrison to be my realtor, and then I begged him to let me join his team, um, and he said no, eventually I convinced him and, and another partner, Keith, that we should just all join forces. And so that's how we came together. It was 20, 2018 um, when we when we sat around, got some pictures of every everything of us sitting around brainstorming, and then boom, 2019, we we got it going. And then ever since then, we've been we've been rocking and rolling. I mean, we've sold, you know, fifteen hundred homes since twenty nineteen. So that's that's um, it's a lot of homes. It's been a journey, yeah. It's been a that's journey. a lot of homes. What does the team look like today, Ryan? Team looks like today. So we have a director of operations. We have two um, someone to help on the transaction management side of things. Then we have someone to help on the listing launch side of things. Um, so that's our staff. And then we have a couple of VAs on as well. And then from there, it's just, um, you know, we have sales agents who are helping our clients, buyers and sellers, um, either buy a home or sell a home. And so we're trying to keep it really simple. Um, okay. that's how we look like organization size is right around 20, 20 okay. people. Yeah. Including the agents, like including agents and admin, everybody. Okay. That's a good size. Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, yeah. That's a good size. So do you, do you, are you like, what's your role in that today? Are you still listing and selling? Are you more in a, a leadership role or all of the above? Like what's your role in the day of the life of Ryan Butler and the coalition? Yeah, all, all the above. So, um, you know, a big part of what I do is just kind of man the fort in the back of the house, if you will. And so that's all the operational things. I, I take ownership in that piece as part of my responsibilities. Um, so that's, you know, budgeting, that's hiring, all those things, um, career visioning. So all those things in the, in the back end. And then I, I still sell, um, you know, once your skill sets and your network gets strong enough, you're still able to generate business and, and, and to have time to do some other things too. So I still usually sell a couple dozen homes, two, three dozen homes a year. Um, nice. Got to keep the skills fresh. Make sure the agents know that, you know, you're not retired from selling real estate and they know they can go to you. <laughs> yeah, right. You still got it, right? And it's like, got it. <laughs> yeah, still got it a little bit. Contrary yeah. to popular belief. Yeah, I still, yeah got you it. still got it. You still got it. Well, that's awesome. And so, and it sounds, you know, you have such a great reputation for your team and what you guys have created. And I just know a lot of people who know you guys really well that just say nothing but amazing things about who you are in P as people. And I think how you show up in your community is also really cool. And, you know, one of the things I got to know from you in the interview that we did was you're really big in helping other people build their wealth too. You're not just looking out for yourself building wealth. You've moved beyond that and you're helping other people, whether it's family members or community, like, let's talk about that a little bit. Why is that matter to you? Because let's talk about that path. Cause you talked a lot about helping others invest. Yeah. I mean, so when I, when I got my real estate license, I heard a phrase that Gary said, and he said, you could be anywhere you want to be in five years. 
So I basically put my head down for five years and only focus on the sales business. And that's kind of where, you know, where we kind of looked up and said, okay, from 2017 to 2022, more or less, 2021, only really focus on the sales business. And then I looked up and said, okay, great. It's time to start doing the investment stuff again. And so from 2021, I looked up and I said, okay, how can I best still continue to serve my people and still do something for my family and myself? And the, the, you know, the thing that made the most sense to me was um, to do multifamily investing. And so what ended up happening is I bought a property and I needed some money to get the property done. And then I went to my family members and they were willing to invest in the property. You'd be surprised what grandma and aunties and all these people have hidden in a shoebox somewhere. That's right. <laughs> so we were able to raise the money and, and get the home or uh, get the property done. It was a 15 unit apartment building and um, converted it, actually able to convert it to 16 units. And then uh, we've just been increasing, you know, uh, turning over the units, renovating the units, and then getting the units to market rent because they were, um, it was run down and everything like that. Code enforcement violations, all those types of things. Um, so yeah, we just brought beautifying the property and, and um, that's been a good thing. So that you guys still hold it, you still have that and just run that you've re have you done all the units already? All the 16? Not all, no, not all of them. We okay. got a couple more to do. A couple um, more. A couple more to do. And yeah, man, but it's been really good though. Most of the units are, you know, we got about five more units to go on that property. So we end up turning about five units a year, um, five more to go. And, and then, yeah, man, it will be fully finished. Yeah. That's amazing, huh? And and so and so you have a ownership group with your family on that, or yeah, I got um, you know, my father in law, my grandmother, my parents, a couple aunts, um, and so yeah, that we 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 got the money together because it wasn't like a you know, it's not the biggest property in the world, but it was you know, a fifteen unit property, and um, I was able to get it for a good value. I paid the seller what he wanted. Um, and, and then I was able to take that and increase the value of it by, by doing the renovations and, and increasing the rents. Yeah. And which increases, it helps everything. Like you said, beautifying. And you think about, you know, then that's in DC. Did you buy that, Ryan? Is that that's in actually in, um, in the Hampton Roads area. So like near Virginia beach. Okay. But East coast up there. <laughs> yeah. Not in Mississippi. So, um, yeah. So, you know, you think about, I come back to your, your thoughts as a young man, right. Who like knew the limitations of where he was growing up and the financially, the limitations, right? And you're like, I'm not going to let that be to, you know, fast forward, you know, being the person that takes everybody with him, right? You took everybody with you on that. You didn't, ha you didn't have to do that. That was a creative solution because I'm sure it helped you out as well, but you took everybody with you. You didn't have to do that. Yeah. I mean, it was cool because then that was an example to show other people and we ended up buying bigger properties with, clients and friends and everything. So, I mean, we bought a couple hundred units over the last couple of years by basically group economics, bringing all our people in and, and just buying stuff together. So it, it's worked really well. And, you know, people are going to make a lot of money from it. And, and I always say to me, I'm not good at some of these, um, these other things, like I'm not good at the nonprofit. I'm not good at a lot of these things, but what I feel like I am good at is helping people make money so that they can take that money and their time and go invest it the way they need to in the things that's important to them. So it's amazing. You know, when we were doing our big why panel, you know, and we were asking like, what's your legacy and what's the impact you make in your big why and all the things. And you're so humble and modest about, well, I don't know. I'm just doing my thing. Right. But what you're doing, Ryan, is you're helping people's like futures be so much bigger than yeah. they would have without your help. Yeah, no, it's, um, I mean, it's, a, it's, I just feel gratitude around it. Right. Because, you know, I, I, I'm just a vessel in the end. I'm just a vessel. And so I'm just trying to make sure that I can um, be as impactful as I can be while I'm still here on this earth. Because uh, no man knows the day nor the hour. So I just got to keep, keep, uh, keep at it every day. Well, you are a ray of light, my darling. And everybody that's around you, I'm sure is so grateful to be in your presence. So, so, okay. So when you think about all these things that you've done, like, what are you most proud of? 
Um, I'm most proud of um, the community that's been fostered through coalition and the impact and outreach that it has. I mean, we were on a podcast the other day and I mean, we had hundreds of people reach out to us and just saying that, you know, thanks for the motivation. Thanks for the inspiration. And so that's been really cool. And then just to be able to provide opportunities for the people in our world, you know, help them, you know, start their careers in real estate, help them buy real estate, help them find jobs and husbands and wives. You'd be super, like within the coalition community, man, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of things that happen, not just real estate. So we, we see some crazy things going on in our community. We're like, Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. Then, then expect that one, but here we got coalition <laughs> babies. Okay. Here we okay. go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I love that so much, but think about that community. Like you said, that's a whole community that you guys created. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, I would say, I never say create. I say, we just foster it, man. Yeah. The people are already there. Um, sometimes they just need someone to help foster that and, and help groom that community. So it can be the best version of itself. The community already existed. And we, we you know, I define communities, anybody that, that I touch, that's my community. So you're part of my community. Anybody that, that, that knows me and I know them a two way, a two way yeah. relationship. Like you're part of my community. Sometimes it's loose. Sometimes it's tight. Um, like, you know, like sometimes it's a tight relationship, sometimes it's a loose relationship, but as long as we're, we're there, like you're part of my community. So I love that so much. And that's, and that is like legacy, darling. I mean, that is like community, like life is people, right? Mm -hmm. Life is people and the connections we make and the more people we take along with us, the bigger the life is. Right. And, and you see, when you get to see magic happen in, and I love that you say you're just fostering it. Right. That's really cool. And that's just, but, but what that means to me, when I hear you tell me that is you're living in a space where you're just in alignment of your purpose and yeah. you're just showing up to serve other people and opening doors and not just thinking you're not self-serving and all this. Now with that, you are rewarded, right? Because yeah. you're thinking of a we instead of a me, right? You're yeah. taking people with you. And yeah. that's always so much more powerful in life when, when you get to do that, right? For sure. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's uh life can be really lonely, so it's nice to go with some people. <laughs> it sure is. It's so much better with great people. So what are you most excited about? I am most excited about um, some of the things we have coming up, um, some packages we're putting together uh, for education, some um, some media things we got going on. I think it's going to be really interesting to come up because we're we're at a point where we're trying to see how can we impact more people? How can we share with more people? And so um, we're going to be pu we're putting together a, a package of classes, education, those types of things to help, um, you know, real estate investors as well as uh, real estate agents to grow in their careers and, their, and grow their wealth. So we're really excited about that. That's coming out, you know, to BD, TBD, right, when it comes out. But we're working really hard on building that out right now so that we can continue to have the impact and continue to have the, um, the, uh, the influence, you know, use our influence in a good way. Ryan, that's so awesome. And you, th you think about wealth building, right? Wealth building and just money in general, right? And just how to build wealth. Because people, I think people can figure out ways how to make money in their jobs or their careers, right? You, that that part people figure out, right? Usually, <laughs> for the most part. It's But what to do with it. What to do with it. That's where the ball gets dropped because we're not taught that in school. You didn't learn it in school. I didn't learn it in school. We learned it on the school of hard knocks like you yeah. <laughs> At that one failing forward moment, right? Yep. But you, but so when you have somebody that's a, a bright light, like taking people with them along the way, like that's such that's such a huge benefit because it's what you do with the money, mm -hmm. where the wealth happens. It's what you do with it. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. And that's the thing, man. Like in the end, you can't take it with you. So, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so, so it's, it's it's what money can do for you and the people you care about. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. So I noticed on the LinkedIn, it said that you guys had helped raise a almost a hundred thousand dollars during COVID. What was that about? Yeah, I mean, we've facilitated over a million dollars since inception. So we've been able to really, um, you know, really lean into that. And all of our events, we have really big events. We just had a brunch, and our brunch had like three hundred people there, and um, we were able to to raise funds for 
Uh, every year we pick a partner, a, a nonprofit partner that we that we sponsor and we help raise funds for. It. And so, I mean, we've just had some really cool experiences on that. I mean, one story is like we had a client, one of the, we, well, I would say facilitate because you never know how the giving happens. Like we don't get to choose that. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's something else. Yeah. But something else was we had a client that gifted a condo to a nonprofit. Yeah. It was an expensive condo. It was a very expensive condo. Very, very nice condo. <laughs> a condo. A, a, a very nice condo. A very nice condo. But like, yeah, very high six figure condo. And so he gifted the condo and we helped facilitate who got the gift. Right. And then on top of that, we see how the gift is being used because, um, and this is this is how the universe works. The client gifted gifted it to um, this this nonprofit called Step Africa. Their their arts their arts things. They do um, dance choreography stepping across the across the world. Oh wow! And so, um, one of the the director of Step Africa actually came in town for something. And we happen to know we happen to know him. We didn't know he was Step Africa, but he was a fraternity brother. We're in the same fraternity. And then we asked him where he was staying, and he was staying in the condo. We didn't know that because we didn't know he was with Step Africa like that. So we just see how it all worked, and he ended up being a client because he was moving to DC. And that's just how things are all connected in the universe. So that was just a way of like how we that's how we see the world. We don't see it as this disconnected, separated thing. We see it as this connected, vibrant uh, community environment that we're just there to help, you know, facilitate, if you will. That's amazing. That's amazing. But that's because you've created a space that's a safe place and leaves room for that to happen. Yeah. Right. You've created or, or you, what, whatever you want to call it. You guys have created a space that something that big can happen, that somebody's donating this for that and all yeah. these different connections it's just so beautiful and that's how life is but we we get we get uh, bogged down from the noise unfortunately and we miss out on so many beautiful things that are happening all around us all the time sometimes right and so yeah. i love that yeah no it was really cool man and so a lot of cool stuff like that happens all the time and i'm just glad to be a part of it man it's, it's a cool life i'm living so i can't even complain you know, you know, giving back, there's such a power of that. And just being a facilitator of that, even if it's not you writing the check or whatever, but just creating the space of that. Yeah. And when you allow people to be their greatest selves, how they show up for you is so cool to see, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, it's better. It's, it's better than just you writing a check and seeing it happen. Yeah, it's for sure. So much better than that. Mm hmm. And then all the connections. That is so cool. So, so the Step Africa is the. So, what does it do? What does that nonprofit do? It what it supports the arts and things like that, or yeah, it's arts. It's arts. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. that's Force amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. And there's so many nonprofits out there. So each. So year, many. I mean, we choose those. We have some for animals. We have some for, you know, we have, um, you know, every year filling up backpacks and so there's so many different ones. So we'll pick one. Yeah. Uh, but then we still we still will give to other ones along the way too. So you know we just keep doing. I would say we just keep doing our thing, man. Which is give, 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 and we give to the community. We kind of foster community, and sometimes we sell real estate. And <laughs> so, I love that so much. I love that so much. So so it started all with real estate, right? It started all with real estate, and then you started taking people with you, and now the focus is on giving. Yeah. And real and we just happen to sell real estate. Like, isn't that a beautiful? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, our mission statement is to be the bridge to our community for all things real estate, lifestyle, and wealth building. So we just always keep those three pillars in front of us. You know, real estate is the backbone of it. It drives. It allows us to drive a lot of things, but then it really gets into the lifestyle, um, and that's where like the nonprofits and the community development goes on, and then the wealth building, making sure people have money to enjoy their lives. Um, my biggest fear is for my clients to be um, homeless and broke when they're at retirement age. So I'm always about like, like I need, you need to get a house. So like at the minimum, if, no matter what decisions you make, you have your paid off home, you're, you're in a, at least in a decent spot. That's how I think about it. That's oh, beautiful. That is so cool. Oh my gosh. I just, I just love what you're doing in the world. You have such like <clears throat> good things you're putting in, in the world. And you know, what's neat is you don't know who you're inspiring because 
it's like a pay it forward thing, right? Because yeah. the kindness that the, the, the focus of you guys giving back and blessing other people in what you do, it's just, it just, it just continues. Yeah. It's so much bigger than you even know, Ryan, so much bigger than you even know. That's so cool. <laughs> and you were like, uh, I don't know if my story is that I'm like, your story is amazing. Like what you guys, you keep on doing what you're doing. Okay. So I get what you're most excited about. Okay. As we wrap up, um, what is something I didn't ask you that, that you would like to talk about? Is there anything I missed that you would like to share with our listeners today? Um, anything you missed with share with listening today? I do have a question I didn't ask you yet that I still want to ask. So you think about that, but I'm gonna ask you this question and then okay. that'll come to you. Okay. I ask every guest. Okay. This is the okay. question of the show. What is playing to win look like to you, Ryan Butler? What is playing to win look like to you? That's a good question. Um, cause that, that kind of evolves over time. I think for when I was in my earlier years, it was definitely like financially driven. It's like, you know, it was be a millionaire and, you know, be rich and wealthy and all those things. And as I've, as I've grown, you know, I have a family. So playing to win, is just like being able to spend time with my wife, my kids, being able to spend time with the people that's most important to me. Um, that's playing to win right now. Like I, <clears throat> I'm not like, uh, you know, uh, the best of the best, but I've figured out some of the real estate game and I've figured out some of the wealth building games. So now I'm trying to figure out <laughs> like the family and friends relationship game. I could be a much better at that. So I'm yeah. trying to, to do, I'm trying to play that to win right now. I love that so much. I love that so much. And that is that, it, it you know, that answer is different for everybody, which I love. And I think depending on what phase in your life that changes and it'll change again, but, you know, playing to win, you know, when you can really look up and feel like you have that great relationship with your wife and your daughter and, and, and friends and just not work related. And what's, what's really cool though, is you've created or your, you know, whatever you called it, you had a really great word. It was, what was it? Foster. You foster. Yeah. You're fo yeah. You're fostering this beautiful community. That's everything's connected that um, like, that's the most normal thing that you would have time for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. You would think. Yeah. Oh, you would think, but you have to, and, and you just have to make a decision of that. And when yep. you're conscious and living in awareness, you look at that thing, like what's missing in my life. And because a lot of us get tunnel focused on, especially when we're achievers, like we are right. And we work, 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 work. And we look up and the kids grown and the marriage is over and all the things. Yep. For sure. Yeah. That, that would be sad. So that would be <laughs> not playing to win. <laughs> yeah, that would not be playing. That'd be playing to lose for sure. That's right. That's right. So that's wonderful. Well, well that I think you can be proud of that. It sounds like you have a beautiful family, beautiful relationships with them. Okay. So now I'll come back and ask, is there anything I didn't ask you that you wanted to, me to t ask you? Um, I think you kind of asked it on there. I think, I feel like I answered, the, I gave the answer that I wanted to around like the family, the health, um, just taking care of your body and um, like you said, not being so tunnel vision, not taking life too seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, there's serious things, of course, but yeah, you got to be able to laugh at yourself and <laughs> you got to be able to know when to t turn it down. So yeah. that could be a little bit intense. So it's so always up. So I'm trying to, I'm learning when to turn yeah. it a little bit more. Um, so I'm still learning, man. I'm still learning a lot. We are all works in progress, my friend, uh, no matter how old or young you are, we are all works in progress. And that's the beautiful thing. Like we never arrive, right? Never <laughs> we trying. never arrive. Okay. So I do have one more question for you though. Like, because you are so really focused on helping other people and teaching about wealth and things like that. Like if somebody wanted to find you guys and, and learn more about like the teaching, like they're like, man, I want that. I don't have, I want to either be better at wealth building with real estate and things like that. Like, or I just don't even know where to start. Like what would be a great way for people to get in touch with you or find out yeah. more about it? Sure. So um, on Instagram, you can reach us at, at coalition properties. So my personal Instagram, you can reach out to me at Ryan Butler Hoya, H O Y A, like the, like the university, Georgetown Hoyas. Um, and so that's the best way to reach out to me, to be honest with you. And because I check my messages, I'm on, I'm on there frequently. Okay. And so, yeah, I would say that um, that's the, that's the best, that's probably the best way. I did have one more thing that it just crossed my mind. And, and, and this is one of the things that's going to tie into what you said. Like for me, the thing that I'm thinking about now is like, how can I help these next generation people that, that I'm, you know, I always say my, my personal uh, mission statement is to um 
be the most impactful and the two most impactful things you can do is to inspire people and create opportunities. And so creating opportunities for um, the people in my life, the people in my world, if you will, especially on my career side right now, got some young, young up and coming, you know, killers out there that are just trying to change the world. And so what's been really cool is watching one of our own within the team get nominated for uh, National Association of Realtors 30 Under 30. And so Isaiah Hasward is um, is a finalist on their top 50 right now for 30 Under 30, which is really cool, right? Like the fact that you oh, can do cool. on a team, the fact that you can do, like, you know, also, everybody thinks you got to be, you know, some solo, you know, solopreneur when, man, you can, you can do great things and achieve great things on with other people around you. Like it can be a win-win. And so um, for me, that's probably one of the biggest things and just um, showing the support on him and being able to vote for him. So at, at Isaiah Hasward on his, uh, on Instagram, if you want to check him out and, and go vote for him. Right. So yeah. he, he can win. <laughs> oh man, I love that you said that. Absolutely. He's got my vote. I'll make sure to go in and vote. Do you know when the voting is? Um, it's every day for the next, you can vote every day, I think for the next like week, basically. Okay. All right. So we need to get on that now. So this won't probably make it into the podcast later on, but for right now, our live listeners that watch this go vote. I love that. I love that. But Thank that's you. next generation, darling. And when I asked you at the, uh, we asked you at family reunion, when we said about legacy and things like that. And a lot of that was like, you know, being a great father and everything. It, but you do see that your legacy is is pretty amazing and, and it reaches a lot of places. You see that, right? Yep, yep, yep. So excited about that. Well, keep on being you, darling. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And thanks for having me on. Thanks for everybody that's watching. Super grateful for you guys. Um, and like as per usual, you know, Melanie's killing it out here and, and bringing on all these amazing guests. And I'm just humbled that I could be one of them. Oh, my, I'm, I'm so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I love that we got connected at Family Union. Yes. And I'm, be, I'm I'm so honored to be part of your community, my friend. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you for being on the show. Not a flaw. All right. Go, go make some things happen today. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, uh, all right. I'll talk to you later. Okay, Ryan. Thank you. Bye, guys.